everybody here in town of staff in the like the copy of God's Word. He's uh, written what that is, the Bible. An extract from it, at least anyway. Um, your starter for um, your education in God's Word, the Bible. You like a copy of God's Word, too. Feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly, freely place into your hands, no cost, no obligation to you. If you like one, do feel free to uh, come and ask for one. This is God's work when all said and done. And of course, has uh, the ability that uh, my work doesn't have, you know, to uh, educate you in the things of God and bring you to a right mind, you know, out of that natural state in which uh, you were conceived and born and bring you, you know, to uh, knowledge of your maker and, of course, the knowledge of, uh, you know, the purpose for which he actually made you and brought you into being. And that is that uh, you should uh, glorify him and enjoy him too, of course. That uh, goes without saying. So if you like a copy of God's Word, do feel free to come and ask for one. Still talking here about the, the book of Psalms, you know, where uh, King David, he was a king back in Israel back in those days, and he wrote the whole book of Psalms, don't you know? And then that book of Psalms, you know, back in the Old Testament, long, long before Jesus Christ was born into the world, King David talks about uh, his, uh, his greater son, he, uh, is how he uh, refers to him. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who then was to be born into the world. And of course, King David, well, don't you know, he was a godly, he was a righteous man. He went not meant to do with the modern day atheism, godlessness. Now, he was a godly, he was a righteous man, by faith, that is, in Jesus Christ, because not even back then, just the same as today, that's how a body you know, it's uh, counted to be uh, right with God through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ, no other way. Was that way right from the beginning? And will be that way right to the end. No merit. You can't work for it, be good for it. You can't be religious for it, go to church for it. You know, uh, you have to believe for it. That's what God requires of you. That you believe, you see. You believe in what he has said, spoken, you believe what God has caused to be written. You believe what God has produced and provided. A Savior, that is. His only begotten Son, whom He sent into the world to die on a cross, rise again from the dead, in order that your sin might be paid for, cleared away, taken away, and that you be right with God. Brought on to the right, the smiley side of God, instead of the angry frowning sight of God. That's how a person gets, that's how a person got right with God back then, in David's day, and that's how a person gets right with God today. We look forward to the coming of Jesus and what he would do. And we look back to... No, superstition, no, sir. superstition. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That's what you believe. Yeah. That's what you believe, sir. So like I say, my friends, uh, you know, coming... Uh, to Jesus Christ. That, that's how uh, by faith as he bids you to. Come unto me, he says. You know, whoever you are, whoever you are, your troubles, your distresses, and of course many troubles in our society, well in our world today, they're not. You know, the pandemic and everything that's all well, coming out of it, you know, all the horror stories that we hear, the loneliness, depression, suicide, you know, loss of employment, loss of homes, breakdowns of marriage, that's what we end with. And when? When will it come to an end? Well, who knows? I don't wonder that people are in despair. But one of the things, if you were to read the book of Psalms, one of the, one of the things that you find King David doing is, you know, that he, he prays, you know? Every circumstance of life you'll find, you know, Whatever the trouble, whatever the difficulty, the disappointment, well, he brings it to God in prayer. And of course, this is what God himself says, you know, he says, call in the day of trouble, call upon me, and I will answer me, answer you, 
and thou shalt glorify me. So in the time of trouble, you see, that's the thing to do. Make your trouble, your loneliness, your depression, your fear, you know, your unemployment, the collapse of your business, whatever the adversity that you're facing, make it work for you. No, don't let it kill you. Don't let it destroy you. Let it work for you. Call upon me in the time of trouble, and I will answer you, says God. And of course, well, there's only one person that David has to go to. There's only one person you've got to go to who can save you, who can deliver you. As a certain fact, I don't think Mr. Johnson can. Certain fact, uh, you know, the government with all its, uh, well, with all their advisors, scientific and otherwise, no, all the king's horses and all the king's men can't put the country can't put the nation, can't put the world back together again. We need somebody higher, somebody much stronger, somebody with the mercy, the pity, somebody with the power, you know? The thing is, you know, that you can have pity on somebody, you and I. You know, you can pity somebody in their distress, but you know, you haven't got the power. You haven't got the power to help them do anything for them, perhaps, maybe. But God, you see, he's merciful, he's pitiful to the downcast, the broken. Yes, even the sinners, you know, who have got themselves in a mess with their stupid sin. Merciful, pitiful, but with the power, my friends, to do something about it, to rescue, to deliver you from your troubles, from, of course, well, your greatest trouble, that is the sinfulness, the wickedness of your unbelieving heart. So King David here in this Psalm, Psalm 48, if you want to check it out, he says here, for this God is our God forever and ever, he will be our guide even unto death. Ever is of course, when are you going to stop being foolish and grow up by? Huh? You're going to be a stupid all your life. Why don't you grow up? What age are you? Uh, huh? Uh, really? Should have thrown me. Don't grow up. Uh, be a man. Be a man. You're, you're almost there. Start behaving like one. Not like a child. I thought I'd expect a five year old to behave. Yeah? Wise up, boy. Wise up. Get yourself right with God. So like I say, friends, or rather, as David says, for this God and the emphasis, emphasis, don't you know, is on the word this, this God. For this God is our God forever and ever, says King David. But this God, of course, he means, well, the only God because there's only one. You know, you got some people, you know, in the land. Hallelujah. You know, there's a, a multitude, a multitude. Oh, I know, I know. I've had it. I've had it. I've had it. Because you're coming in. Wow, brilliant. We will. 
Because you're coming against the grain. Oh, no, I know. Be I careful. Be careful. I know. They've been up there already. Carry on. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Gospel. God bless you guys. Yeah, we'll give tracks out. Yeah, sure, sure. Look at sure. the camera. I know, it's perfect. I see fucking David says this, 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 this God. Do you know? This God is our God. He says forever and ever. There's only one. Yeah, there's only one. You can't only be one God. You know, God is one. God is one. God is one. And he's the one, you know, that made heaven and earth and everything. He's the creator, you know. And here's some of you, you go about, you know, God's world, drinking his food, you know, and drinking his water, enjoying all the good things that he gives to you, and you live in denial of him. And he obviously and clearly, he's your maker. He gave you life and breath and being, you know. He gave you everything you are. He made the world, the universe, and everything in it. Well, the Bible says, the Bible says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all that. Against all that ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Why? Because they hold down the truth and unrighteousness. You know, they deny God, the existence of God. And it's so clear, so clear, says the Bible, as clear as it knows on your faith. No justification, no evidence, my friends. For your evolutionary nonsense. Not an, not an ounce of scientific evidence for it. None whatsoever. When God says this God, he means the God who made all things, who made you, and made you for his own glory, to glorify him, and to enjoy him, to know him, to have eternal life in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. But here's the thing, my friends, you can look you can look at God's creation all day long. You can look at the stars, you can look at the earth, you can look at all the creatures, great and small. And they testify to the existence of God, but they don't bring you to know God. You need the Bible for that, my friends. You need His Word and His Word of promise, my friends. His Word that He's given to us that makes Him more clearly and fully known. Here, my friends, you find what he's like. Here, my friends, you, you read of his mercy, his kindness, his grace, even towards those who deny him, even towards those who live in denial of his very existence. He gave us his word. He gave us his Bible so that we could come to know him, so that you could come to know eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. This is eternal life, says Jesus that they might know God and the one whom he sent, Jesus Christ being the one whom he sent to die on that cross and rise again from the dead in order that you might be brought to a knowledge of him, in order that you might know him. In order, my friends, there are all these troubles, all the distress of the present time that you might call upon him in the day of trouble. And I will answer you, he says. It's a promise from your maker, from God. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you. Mr. Johnson might not answer you. He might not come and help you out of your troubles. Don't doubt it for a moment. But God, he promises, he vouches, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you, and thou shalt glorify me. It's what you were made for. It's what he made, what he gave you life and being for, my friends, to glorify him and to enjoy him. This God, my friends, the God of the Bible, God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other, and no other, my friends, who can save and deliver you. The God of all creation, the God of the Word, the God who has given to us his promise of grace, Grace, my friends, is a power. More than just a word out of the Bible. You know that song that you sing, Amazing Grace? Well, wow, you're so used to singing it, you know. It's powerless now, you know. But grace is a power. Wrath is a power. The wrath of God is the power that, that drives when people reject God's Son, Jesus Christ. His wrath is a power that drives them away from God. But his grace, my friends, is the power that draws people to his son and unites them to his son. So my friends, it's important that you hear the word of his grace, the promise of his grace, my friends. 
the undeserved, unmerited, unworked for favor of God. How does a person get God's favor? Faith in the Son of God. Faith, grace alone, faith alone, in Christ alone. No other way. That's the message of the Bible alone. From beginning to end, the whole Bible, my friends. Nothing about human merit. Because you can't make yourself right with God. You can't pay for it. You can't be religious for it. Want to be religious? Well, here's the place for you behind me. They'll make you religious, but they won't put life into you, love into you. They won't, they won't tell you about God's salvation. They won't tell you how you need to repent of your sin, how you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way a person gets right with God, my friends, not by human merit, not by religiosity, not by going to church, not by saying your prayers, doing your beads, not by doing the stations of the cross, the pillars of his land. One thing and one thing only is required of you. Not even doing good, that's not enough. Because there's none good, says God, and none that doeth good. One, one way only, my friends, believing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Faith in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Nothing else reconciles a man or woman to God. Faith, my friends, you must believe. Oh, you see, I don't feel guilty. It doesn't matter how you feel. Not matter how you feel, my friends. It doesn't matter what, what your thoughts are about sin. You are sinful, you are guilty, says God, and you need to be forgiven. And Jesus says, come unto me, and I will give you rest, rest from your sin, rest from the burden of sin. Rest from your guilt, the weight of guilt that hangs upon you, whether you're aware of it or not. The Bible says the wrath of God hangs over you. You're unaware of it. doesn't matter. It's still there. It's still there. And there's only one person can take it away. And that's the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came into the world not to make men religious. came into the world, my friends, to save, to save sinners. And that's what he does what he did when he died on the cross and for the last 2,000 years and more he's been saving men and women he's been saving religious people idolatrous people blasphemers drunkards drug addicts criminals criminals on the side, on the side of Jesus dying on the cross he was a murderer he was an insurrectionist and his last moment last moment of life he turned to Jesus Remember me, he says, when you come into your kingdom. This day today, he says, Jesus says, you will be with me in paradise. I tell you, the worst of you and the best of you, whatever you are, come to Jesus. He will save you. Trust in him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. No other way, my friends, by which you come to God. No other way by which you can be right with God. You can be saved only by the grace of God. The grace is what you don't deserve, my friend. Ah, oh, here you are. You think you deserve. You think God owes you something. You think God should do something for you. My friends, you have no rights at all before God. All forfeited when Adam sinned. And we've all sinned in Adam, the Bible says. We've inherited Adam's sinful nature. We were conceived in sin. We were born in sin, the Bible says. We come into the world shaped in iniquity and lawlessness. Where do you think all the lawlessness in your world comes from today? Where do you think all the, all the, the rebellion that you see in the world today, where do you think it all comes from? All the killing, my friends, all the taking of human life, by abortion, by euthanasia, drugs and violence. Your world is never, never done, never satisfied with its killing, slaughtering day by day. My friend, in contrary to God's commandment, thou shalt not kill. But those that hate me, says God, they love death. So it comes quite natural to you. It comes quite natural to the natural man, the natural woman to go about killing, my friends, 
because of their hatred for God, because of the enmity in their hearts against God. That's the problem, my friends, is the warfare. Warfare going on inside you. That enmity, that hatred, hatred of God and hatred for your neighbor. Can't you see it? This God, I mean, the God of the Bible, the God and Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, this God, a hatred for him and a hatred for your neighbor. That's why you go about killing one another. That's why you go about harming one another, because you hate your neighbor. Commandment says that some of God's commandments, Jesus says, is to love God and love your neighbor, this God, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But you don't love your neighbor, and that you need to love God. One goes with the other, hand in glove. Just as night follows day, you hate God, so you hate your neighbor. And that's why you go about killing the unborn. That's why you go about taking life unjustly and illegally. Because, my friends, of that hatred in your hearts. You talk about hate crime, my friends. The biggest hate crime of all lies in your own hearts, my friends. Hating God and hating your neighbor. But God can change you. God can take that hatred out of your heart. He can take that rage that you feel in your heart against him. But he's mentioned, his name is mentioned. When we come to you in the street with the gospel and we tell you about God's grace, what do we get from you but rage and anger? Well, God can take that away from you. God can take the hatred out of your heart and give you a new heart, my friends. Heart is the seat above all things and desperately wicked, says God. That's why you gravitate towards that which is deceitful. That's why you believe the false, false religion, false philosophies of men, evolution. Believe anything but the truth because you got a deceitful heart. But God can take that deceit out of your heart and give you a heart of truth, a heart that loves the truth, believes the truth, and is set free by the truth. Only Jesus, only the Son of God, only this God, my friends, King David speaks about, only this God, he will be our God, he says, forever and ever, the God of the Bible, the God of redemption, the God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But my friends, you remain in your ungodly state. You remain, my friends, in your unbelief. You perish in that way. You shall not stand in the judgment, says King David. You gotta get out of the unbelief. You gotta surrender it, yield it, give it up. You gotta repent of it. And you gotta turn and face the King Jesus to the Son of God, who alone can save you, who alone can deliver you, and promises to do so, and promises that whosoever believes in him should not perish, not perish in their sin, not die in their sin. But Jesus says, if you do not believe that I am he, if you do not believe that I am the Son of God, do not believe that I am the Savior of the world, do not believe that I am the Savior that you need. He says you'll die in your sin, perish in your sin. But whosoever believeth, believeth, my friends, faith in the Son of God shall not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. And this God will be your God too, forever and ever, my friends. An everlasting love, everlasting love, my friends bestowed upon you instead of the wrath instead of the displeasure of God you get the everlasting love of God a love never to be taken away from you love forever and ever I will never leave you I will never forsake you never abandon you your friends and your family might oh they might dislike you they might hate you for trusting Jesus they might they might separate themselves from you because you love Jesus. That happens sometimes, but God won't leave you. God won't abandon you. He'll be your God forever and ever, never to leave you. Nobody separate you ever from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Everlasting righteousness, my friends. 
The moment that a sinner believes in Jesus, the moment that a sinner receives Jesus as their Savior, God dons the judge's cap and down comes the gavel and he says, he declares righteous, not just not guilty, not just forgiven, but he declares the sinner to be righteous, everlastingly righteous, right before God for time and eternity, never ever to know his wrath and his displeasure again, taken from off you all the condemnation gone, for there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, trusting in Christ Jesus, believing in Christ Jesus. But my friends, you must believe. You must trust and obey. You must come to Jesus and put your trust in him in order to obtain an order to receive, my friends, by the grace of God, the everlasting love and the everlasting righteousness that God would bestow upon you when you're the moment that you're reconciled to him through his son. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God, you see, himself had to come. Nobody else good enough. Nobody else powerful enough. No good sending another Moses. No good sending an angel. Not powerful, not good enough, my friends. God himself had to come. He was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And we bring to you, my friends, today that message of reconciliation, that message of God's love so demonstrated clearly. This God, my friend, this God whom David speaks about, this God who sent his son to die on a cross to demonstrate his love, the only evidence, I tell you, in all the universe of the love of God, not in the galaxies, not in the stars, not in the creatures great and small, one place only, my friends, at the cross of Jesus Christ, the immense demonstration of God's love for sinners, yeah. taking his only begotten, beloved son, and slamming him against that cross, nailing him to that cross to bleed and die and bear his own wrath upon his own son so that vile sinners such as you and I might be reconciled to God. So that when the vilest offender, I tell you, the vilest offender truly believes that moment that very moment, a pardon from Jesus receives. Oh, go to Jesus. Go to him, my friends, and receive the everlasting love and righteousness of God. He has, my friends, an unchanging intent to save. The cross demonstrates this, my friends. It demonstrates two things. It demonstrates this, my friends, God's hatred for sin. God's loathing of sin, but it demonstrates something else. It demonstrates the love of God, and it demonstrates, my friends, God's intent to save. God's intention in sending His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. That if you believe, you shall be saved through the cross of Jesus, through the shed blood of Jesus, through the Son of God, who loved sinners and gave Himself for them. God's intention, my friends, that men and women should save, that they should not be, they should not perish, but come, my friends, and receive that everlasting life, love and righteousness, receive the grace, the unmerited favor of God, merited only by Jesus, merited only by the Son of God. He did the work that you cannot do. He did the work that none of us can do. He did the work that all the religion in the world can do for you. Jesus did it all. And he cried from the cross as he was dying. 
It is finished. Done. He's done it all. Nothing for you to do, my friends, but believe, but come to him in faith, trusting him, and to promise his salvation, righteousness, love, everlasting shall be yours. Oh, all oh my friends, his promises. Forever and ever, this God shall be our God. Forever and ever, the unchanging God. The unchanging God. No change with God, my friends. His promises stand just the same now as when they were first written, as when they were first spoken. Those promises still hold good. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, and thou shalt be saved. I tell you, no sinner, no sinner ever came to Jesus sincerely seeking forgiveness, seeking pardon, seeking love, seeking deliverance from their trouble. None ever came to Jesus and were turned away. I will in no wise cast out any, any sinner who comes to Jesus. You claim the promise by faith, my friends. Whosoever believeth shall not perish. If you believe, you cannot perish. Why? Because God's word hangs upon it. His character hangs upon it. His word cannot fail. Not a single word of all that God has ever promised shall ever fail. And so when he promises deliverance, when he says, call upon me in the time of trouble, and I will answer you, his word hangs upon it. It's a promise from God, and you can take it through faith in Jesus. You can take it back to him, argue it with him, say to him, get on your knees and cry out to him and say to him, you promised, you promised. I've come, I've come, I'm in trouble, and I need help, I need deliverance. Oh, his promises are good, my friends. They're not like the politicians. They're not like the promises of Mr. Johnson. They're not like your promises. They're not like my promises. Not worth, not worth the light, any of them. Oh, but the promises of God, my friends, they stand sure and firm, my friends. Like, uh, like rocks, my friends, in the storm, of the ocean of sin, my friends, that rampages through this world. There is a rock, there is a place you can go to. This God who promises and who keeps his promises, whose intent is to save, whose desire is to save, my friends. And you want, you want for believing. And I got it in my hand. This is your warrant for believing the word of God, my friends. God's stated intention to save, my friends, to save sinners, sinners like you and I. So should you come to him? Well, you come on the basis of what he has spoken. You come on the basis, my friends, of what he has promised in his word, and he cannot refuse you, cannot. But you must come to him. And you must come to him in faith. You must come to this God. And this God only. The one who King David speaks about here. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Another promise for the one who believes. That he will guide us with his counsel. And afterwards receive us to glory. Oh, I tell you the promises. The most gracious Wonderful promises, my friends, in the Word of God. Every one of us, every one of you here, under the sound of my voice today, one place that you can be sure of, we're all heading towards, and that's that moment when you breathe your last and go out of this world. You're heading towards death. Supply to that to man says God wants to die. After that comes the judgment. Whatever it be that takes you out of this world, you're going to die. After that then comes the judgment. My friends, you need to be ready for that day. You know, the virus, the COVID-19, who knows? Maybe a wake-up call. Maybe the trouble. 
that it's brought to you, I don't know, collapse of your business, loss of your job, loneliness, distress, all kinds of trouble have come out of it, my friend. Maybe it's a wake-up call from God for you, maybe in the province of God. Maybe it's a trouble that he's brought to you to bring you, to make you, to call upon him. Call upon me in the day of trouble, he says, and I will answer you, and you shall glorify me. Call upon him, my friend, but do it, my friend, before it's too late, before you breathe your last, before you go out of this world. Too late then, my friend, too late then. Your religious people, they'll tell you, well, you get a second chance, don't you know? The Pope will tell you about purgatory. No such a place in the Bible. Only two destinations, my friends. Heaven and hell. One of the two. A heavenly mansion with God and a hellish hovel with the devil in the lake of fire. Which will it be, my friends? God's going to judge you. God's going to take you out of this world and maybe sooner or rather than later, who knows? You don't know what a single day will bring forth. But I urge you today, now is the day, says God. Now is the time, the accepted time, says God. The day of his favor, the day when you can get right with God, the day when you can receive his favor, the day when you can call upon him, the day, my friends, when you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, come to him all heading, heading towards that point, my friends. That the end of your history, the end of your existence in this world, an appointment, a divine appointment, a time marked on God's calendar, my friends. A day, a moment when you'll breathe your last and go out of this world. It's appointed, divinely appointed. Many appointments you can cancel, you can postpone, you can put off, but not this one. Not this one, my friends. And you need to be ready because you're going to keep that appointment. And when you breathe your last, you need to have the assurance of eternal life in you. You need to have, my friends, the assurance of God's grace and his favor that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. You need the grace to face it, my friend. The grace of God. The grace of God that enables a man or woman not just to live well, but to die well. I just got I'm good to you. I'm good, yeah. Cool. You're doing well. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Need to be ready, my friends. You need the grace, you see, to be able to stand before what the Bible calls the king of terrors, my friend. Why the king of terrors? Because death is unnatural to man. And we're not made to die, my friends. Sin brought death into the world. That's why it's so fearful, because it's unnatural. But you're going to face it. You are. I am. We're all going to face it, my friends. But you need the grace of God to be able to face it well, my friends. To not only live well, but to die well. To have an advocate there at the right hand of God. One to defend you in heaven's court, my friend. One to claim you for his own. One who can stand forward to say, I died for that person. Did Jesus die for your sin? You alone will know the answer to that question. Will you believe? Will you turn from your sin? Will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Death will be paid, the condemnation be taken away. And have the grace, my friend, the grace of confidence in that day to face the judgment of God. For we shall all appear before the judgment throne of God, you and I both alike. But my friends, the believer, all oh, the one who has trusted in Jesus, the one who has eternal life, death has no terror for that. King David says, Here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. 
Why? Because death is just a shadow to him. There's nothing there. There's no fear in it for King David because he believed, because he trusts in Jesus. He trusts in the one who has given to him eternal life and he knows that he shall never, never perish. The grace, my friends, not only to face death when it comes, but my friends, to take you through it as well. The assurance, the assurance of eternal life. My sheep hear my voice. Do you hear the voice of Jesus or just the voice of a man? Do you hear the voice of the good shepherd? Do you hear the voice of the Son of God? He said to the opposition, he said, did you not hear my voice because you're not of my sheep? If you hear the voice of Jesus, if you hear him calling you, if you hear his word today, he says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. He gives eternal life to his sheep, to those who hear his voice, to those who follow him, to those who come to him, to those who trust in him, to those who believe in him. The one thing that's required of you, my friends, faith towards the Son of God, who loved sinners and gave himself for them. God's intent in sending his Son into the world, that through him that you might be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth should not perish. Not perish, my friends, not perish. Oh, you might, you might go out of this world unsaved. You might go out of this world without eternal life, but you don't go out of it unloved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God has produced a righteousness, a salvation, a redemption. Sure it's for the taking, sure it's for the receiving. Will you receive it? Will you believe? Will you come to him? That's all that's required of you. And here's your warrant. Here's your warrant for coming. Here's your warrant for receiving the grace of God. Here's your warrant, my friends, for being saved. I'm holding it in my hand, the Bible, God's word. He says, believe and I will save you. Call and I will answer you in the time of trouble and thou shalt glorify me, huh? Yeah. You'll glorify him by being saved. Yeah. You'll glorify God's salvation. But God will be glorified. God will be glorified in you one way or the other, either in your salvation or your damnation. But we are here today, my friends, that you might be saved, that you glorify God in salvation, that you be saved. That you don't live in fear. You don't live in depression. You don't live in loneliness. You don't live broken. You don't live damaged. But restored to God's favor. And delivered by the power of the gospel. And restored, my friends, to friendship with God. For time and for eternity. And only for believing. Only for believing. Not telling you to be religious. Yeah? Not telling you to do the beats. Not telling you to do the stations of the cross. Not telling you to do the pillars of his lap. Believe on Jesus. Believe on Jesus. That's what God commands you. That's what God demands of you. That's what God requires of you. Faith in Jesus. Nothing else, my friends. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that and that alone is what God requires of you. Nothing else. Nothing else, my friend. And this God, to my speak of, this God who so greatly loved the world, this God who gave his only begotten Son, this God who sent his Son to be crucified, nailed to a cross, dead and buried, and raised again from the dead. This God, my friend, be your God forever and ever, for all eternity, my friend safe and secure in the arms of Jesus, safe and secure for time, and safe and secure for all eternity. Oh, eternity is coming, my friends. Eternity is coming. 
Every now and then, God gives you a wake-up call. He reminds you that you're mortal. He reminds you that death is a reality and judgment is inescapable. He sends viruses. He sends earthquakes. He sends tsunamis. He sends plane crashes. He reminds you that you're mortal, that you're going to die, and you're going to face eternity, and you need to be ready, ready, ready for that day. By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, in order that you might be reconciled to God, that you might be ready for that inescapable judgment. Oh, he saves all kinds of sinners. Head shakers too, young woman. He saves them too. Unbelieving, godless head shakers. He saves them. The idolaters, the drunkards, drunkards, the lesbians, the sodomites. Oh, I tell you, my friend, drug addicts, all manner of sinners. Matters not the sin. Matters not the amount of sin. Matters not how long you've been at it. What matters is that you come now. Now, says God. Now is the accepted time, not tomorrow. Now, he says. Not next week. Now, not next year. Now, not when you've had your fill of sin. But now, says God, is the accepted time to come to him through his son, Jesus Christ, and receive his love, receive his righteousness, receive his pardon, receive his forgiveness, receive, my friend, eternal and everlasting life at no price. Come without money. You can't pay for it. You can't work for it, be good for it, be religious for it. You can't be anything for it. You can't do anything for it because all you can do is sin. You need to come to the sinless one. You need to come to the one in whom there is no sin. The sinless son of God who died for sinners. And my friends, who bore the sin in his own body on the tree and ordered that you might be brought back to God the just for the unjust. He, my friends, who is perfectly just, perfectly righteous, died for unrighteous, unjust men and women such as you are here today. What a deal is that? I ask you, my friend, will you find a deal such as that in Stafford today? Huh? Free grace, my friends, the free grace of God, gratis, that's where the word comes from. Gratis, free gratis, you know, it don't cost nothing, nothing to you that is, but great cost to God, great cost to his son, who bled and died on that cross in order that you might be drawn to him, in order that you might receive the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, in order that you might be washed and made clean. He shed his blood, that's why they call him the Lamb of God. He sacrificed himself on the, on the cross. And my friends, that's why he's called the Lamb of God in the New Testament, who takes away the sin of the world and will take away yours today. Should you come to him, what hinders you? What hinders you? Nothing but your unbelief. Nothing but your unbelief. Come unto me, he says. What hinders you? Nothing but your unbelief. Nothing but your folly. Nothing but your foolishness. Nothing but the trinkets and bubbles of this world. Eternity is coming. And what are you taking up with today? Ah, utter nonsense. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest shall be added unto you. Come to him today. Come to him, call upon his day. Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will answer you, and you shall glorify me. Call upon him today, my friends, and give him no rest until he comes to you. And 
until your nose comes to you, until he gives you a pardon, until he knows he gives you eternal life, until you know you've been saved, until you know that you're brought to your right mind, sir. Until you know that you're in your right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his love, clothed in his righteousness, clothed, my friends, in his grace. Come to him today, he bids you to, and make no delay. His sins, your sins, your sins, rather, he will gladly, he will gladly pay for. Yeah. So my friends, come and don't delay. Jesus Christ bids you to. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. My friends, the word of God. This God, this God, no other who so loved the world, King David's God, mine, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death and then for all eternity. Come to him today through his son Jesus Christ. Bow the knee, confess him as your Lord and Savior and be saved salvation to our Lord Jesus Christ. If you like a copy of God's Word, come and ask forward gladly, place into your hands, offer to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you, the Word of God freely offered to you. Yes. Word of God that brings eternal life, souls of men and women. If you'd like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy upon your precious, yeah. never dying soul. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I had to go, brother.